I am going to make a coffee table. It's going to be very simple. It's just designed to hold a mug of... Um, I I'm going to make a tea table. Um, it's just going to hold a mug of tea and a couple of remote controls. It's just a block of wood <laughs> and uh, three legs which I got from my local DIY store. I'm going to use power tools to shape it. It's not going to be square. It's going to be uh, a slightly rounded triangle I think. But you could use hand tools, um, just need to get it shaped and smooth sanded down. But here's the thing, I am going to use super glue as a finish. Now I have seen products out there on Tinternet um, that are designed to do exactly this, they're designed for finishing. I've not seen them available in the UK, so I'm going to, as an experiment, try just ordinary glue. This, this particular brand is CA UK. Um, I don't know how it's going to go, as I say this is an experiment, um, but let's, uh, let's see. First of all, need to get this through my drum sander, get it looking a bit more presentable, and then get it shaped, and then we're ready for finishing, it's that simple. <laughs> Got that nicely finished. There's a little bit of weather damage under here, but that's going to get cut away as you'll see. Um, Shape-wise, we, we, we had something a little bit spacey. Um, we had something a little bit guitar-y. Um, this was going to be bigger, by the way, but we decided that as we were going for three legs, um, this might be a bit unstable if something heavy, mug or something, was put there sort of beyond the legs. It might tip. So this is what we've come up with. Oh, and the reason, the reason for the, uh, the spacey one got rejected is cutting too much wood away, really. This seems altogether a better compromise. Well, it's not a compromise. I think this is a very good design. So uh, I'll get that marked out and we'll get it cut. finish isn't bad, it's pretty smooth, but it's very difficult to get it completely um, ripple free on a spindle sander. So what I'm going to do on my glass plate, I'm just going to just take it along there a little bit and uh, that should just take any ripples out of it. And also roughen it up somewhat. <laughs> I have, I've still got some finishing to do so the thing with doing it this way is you start off with something you think is near perfect but actually when you start doing it you realize it isn't you can see some slightly low spots along here so I'm just going to go until those are taken care of I'm now happy with that. I can't feel, you can see, I think, just uh, a few little lines 
but clearly slight dips but I can't feel them so and I'm sure those will disappear at the next stage of stand, sanding that was 120 I'll now go to 240 but I'm quite happy with that I've got a very sharp edge here which will have to go but um, probably just naturally go by uh, hand sanding with a with a cork block I can see some very slight marks from the drum sander but it looks like they're going with the 240 grit so that's fine. I've now sanded to 240 grit but I'm going to damp it down and this will raise the grain. It'll hopefully show up any little scratches that I've missed and just wait for it to dry and then we'll go again with 240 grit. And we'll do that a couple of times and then hopefully that should give a really good result. This is lighter than I've worked with in the past. I don't know whether this is Sapili. I thought it was Sapili, but it seems a lot lighter than some of Sapili's I've worked with. Still raising the grain a little bit. This is feeling very smooth, so 400 grit. I'm now ready to apply the glue. Remember this is perfectly normal standard super glue, a uh, CAUK brand. Um, a few essentials. A respirator. Um, this has got carbon uh, in the intakes which hopefully will get rid of the fumes. A dust mask is not good enough. Um, it's, this isn't particulate matter, these are fumes. Um, I'm not convinced that's going to do a 100% job, but we'll, we'll see. Um, equally, safety specs, they might not be good enough either. Um, clearly I don't want splashes, but hopefully there won't be any splashes. But I have a feeling the fumes might be getting to my eyes. So I actually have swimming goggles, which I might use. Obviously rubber gloves, essential. Don't want to get it on your skin. I have some uh, poly cotton sheet which I'm going to use, it's uh, lint free and I'm going to treat this almost like a French polishing exercise in that I'm going to be smearing the glue around using the, the uh, lint free cloth, I don't want any fibres in the surface. I've got the window open so uh, ventilation, um, I think this is going to be horrible but we're, we'll, we'll see. The first coat is no longer tacky, but I can smell from the fumes still coming from it that it, it's not completely dry. Um, I, I may apply another coat even so. A couple of things though. You will have noticed when I applied this, it, it's supposed to be ultra low viscosity and it clearly isn't. This is going off and so this might not be ideal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to persevere but I'm a little bit disappointed with this. This is clearly, um, it's older than, um, than it should be really. I, I believe bottles of super glue only last about a year. It could be that this is old stock, but it, it is a lot thicker than it should be. Um, it, it surprised me how long it's taken to dry, but what you must not do is use accelerator because that will just turn it white. Um, I think it gets little gas bubbles in it, or um, it might be boil. It might boil it because it's an exothermic reaction. Having said that, I can see a little bit of white bloom here and there, 
it, it could be that I'm actually breathing on it and that's causing it. Um, super glue does react to moisture. Um, I hope this isn't all the way through the finish. It's just a surface feature and I hope putting the next coat on will will fix that. Um, I'm going to put another coat on before I sand down. Um, let's hope that this white bloom disappears. It's had um, almost two hours to dry now, it's not quite two hours, but I don't know whether you can see these little white flecks. They're, they're very round, I don't think this is dust, I think this is, it might be little spots of moisture that have caused the uh, caused it to whiten. And of course you've got this little rear bite, I had some over overspill um, along the edge, I should have been a little bit more careful, and that's uh, that's gone all white and rough as well. I think actually ran the um, the cloth over it and it, it all rucked up. Um, I'm going to sand it down and hopefully that will take all this off. I don't know how many more coats I'm going to give. Maybe after a sanding and one more coat I can go to uh, final polishing. But uh, it feels quite rough. But uh, that should all be fixed in the sanding. This is. 1500 grit and clearly I'm sanding it better. That's the sanding done. Um, there's still a little bit of bloom but uh, I think that will all go with the next coat and the final polishing. At least I've got the, uh, the overspill sanded flat. So just got to make sure this is fully dry and then we'll put another coat on. This time I'm going to use a glue that really hasn't gone off. Um, it, it's been open a month but uh, it still looks pretty good. Uh, I think I've got enough here to be uh, getting on with. Um, so we'll give a couple of coats of that hopefully if I've got enough and see how we go with that one. That's now had two coats of the stale superglue, uh, the thick stuff, three coats of the fresh thin superglue, and I think it's ready for final uh, sanding and polishing. It's looking pretty good, if a little rough. I've gone back to a thousand grit because uh, the 1500 wasn't making much of an impression on the surface. I think this is really, really hard. So um, I'm just going to go with a, a slightly rougher just to get uh, get the surface even before going back to the 1500. I'm hoping that you can see that I've still got some low spots. I've been sanding for a while now, maybe half an hour. Possibly I should have gone to a finer grit, sorry, coarser grit, but as we're, we're nearly there, so I'll, I'll persevere with the 800 grit. Do I mean? Yes, that 1000 grit, that's what I'm using. Perhaps I should have gone to 800, but we're, we're almost there. Well, the good news is I've now got a beautifully smooth finish with no imperfections at all. The bad news is... I've started to go through to the wood on the sides so I'm going to have to put another another coat on this and I think I'm going to put a coat on the top as well 
um, it should take really well now um, and there shouldn't be too much sanding afterwards obviously I've still got to be careful I don't go through onto the sides again but um, yeah it, it can't be helped um, but putting it on this perfect surface should mean that it goes a lot quicker now I've gone to 1500 grit this time, um, just straight because it, it was a better surface to begin with and it was very easy to go straight to 1500 grit. I've got about probably seven layers on the top and I think eight or nine layers on the side, I must admit I'd lost count, but I'm really pleased with this, a perfect surface. Um, I'm going to go to 2500 grit next. Um, give it a light sanding with that and then we'll go to the liquid abrasives and see if we can get a really nice polish on this. G3 Professional Paint Renovator. This is a, a progressive abrasive. It gets finer and finer as you polish. And I'm going to use a, a French polishing style technique of using a wadge of cotton wool and some 100% cotton bed sheet. 100% cotton, not polyester cotton. Um, hopefully this won't leave any little scratches in the surface. It should be nice and smooth. So that's what I'm going to use to apply it with. I'm going to go again with a fresh part of the pad. And one final time with a fresh pad. I should probably have drilled the legs already, but <laughs> oh well, I might give it a final polish. I've put the legs on. That's assuming that I rough up the finish, but hopefully not. I don't know how abrasive carpet is. Finally, mirror glaze. Now, I probably ought to invest in a, in a polishing cloth, but uh, I'm carrying on using the, the pure cotton bed sheet, which hopefully isn't going to put any of its own scratches in the surface. It says use cotton terry towel, but uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe there's things in here that are going to scratch, but we'll, we'll try it. Um, <laughs> this is only a piece of furniture after all, it's not a, it's not a guitar. <laughs> but it is an experiment. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> this is an amazing finish. Well, I think this is the strangest outro I've ever done, but hopefully this will give you an idea of the uh, the level of quality of the finish. <laughs> um, super glue does give an astonishing finish. Uh, the, you really can be a, a mirror polish, and I'm really pleased with this. I hope you found this useful. Um, what, what have I learnt from this? Um, don't use stale super glue. Make sure your super glue is fresh and thin. I think the thin works best. And you'll need a fair few layers, maybe seven, six, seven layers. Um, it depends how now undulating your surface is, whether you uh, sand through it or not. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, it's this is well worth doing. I might adopt this for uh, guitar making. Um, it is lovely. <laughs> so uh, don't forget to click like, subscribe, comment, share, and uh, we'll see you in the, another video. Bye!